let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sort of showing you how to make a zipper pouch that a tote bag fits inside. However, the tote bag I made does not fit inside because I made it way too large. So anytime in this video that I mentioned 24 inches by 24 inches, don't listen to me. Just don't. I thought it was a great size. 18 inches by 18 inches. It's what I used to do. I don't know what I was thinking. I hadn't had coffee. Um, so here's our zipper pouch. Super cute. Love it so much. We added a little tab with all the little extras and then zipper tabs. Again, just using extras that were cut. This is a lined little pouch. And then the tote bag. 18 inches by 18 inches or smaller, I'm telling you. This is my tote. It's 24 inches by 24 inches. Way too big and it doesn't fit inside the pouch. However, if you don't think I'm taking this bag to Target, you're wrong because I am. I'm going to fill this with all the things I'm pretty sure I could fit inside, but it doesn't fit inside the zipper pouch. So if you wanna make a giant big apron tote, this could have even been a skirt. Then feel free to follow these instructions. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. This is supposed to be another quick project that you can make for the holidays. It's a free sewing pattern because you made it up. Well, I made it up, but now you're doing it, making it your own. So I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you enjoy watching me mess up and question myself this entire video. All right, so I am starting uh, with about a yard of fabric. You really don't need this much. You could um, definitely get what you're wanting out of like two thirds of a yard, so just 24 inches. Um, and honestly, you can use any measurements that you would like to. That's the fun of projects that don't really require a sewing pattern is you can just kind of make it up as you go. Um, so what I'm thinking is to make the zipper pouch about, um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna cut it to eight inches by six inches. So I'll need two exterior and two lining of eight by six. Or, that's right, that one doesn't work. Two. Um, and then I'll need two handles. So I can either use pre-made handles or I can just go ahead and cut 24 inches by six inches and cut that in half. So then I'll have like three quarter inch wide handles. Um, so of course you can choose to sketch this out and cut it with scissors. Um, I'm just using an 18 by three inch ruler for this part. Okay, so we're gonna do eight by six. And another trick, I mean, it's not really a trick that I use, but um, instead of measuring out two of these, what I will do is I will cut out one. Of course, you could rotary cut it if you want, whatever's easier. Okay, so I've got one cut out, and then what I can do is just lay that on the other side. This is not going to get you like a super precise cut, but you're gonna be sewing it with your seam allowances anyway, so you can kind of square it up then. That, and we want this to be like a little bit quicker of a project. Um, and then you can absolutely interface this if you want. Um, but I'm just going to do no interfacing that way. It's a little bit cheaper of a project and like I said, even faster. So there's my two exterior. I'll find a lining fabric in a bit. And then I'm going to grab 
different ruler. I'm gonna use this 24 inch by six inch ruler. Uh, I am going to start out by cutting my handles really quick since this is 24 by six, which is exactly what I want my handles to be. And for this, I am gonna use a rotary cutter. And I really like the Ulfa Splash Cutter. I got these at Joann's on sale for like $10, which is cheaper than the blades were. So I went ahead and bought several in case my blades run out. Okay. So like I said, this is gonna be the handles. So I'm just cutting it at the three inch mark so that I'll have two pieces that are 24 inches by three inches. So there's my handles. I'll be folding these in half. If you want these to be really sturdy, you can add a little bit of woven interfacing and you can like scrap, use scraps of your interfacing really. All right. So now I wanna do 18 inch by 18 inch square. Um, and you can, like I said, absolutely do different sizes for your tote bag. I just want like a really big tote for like, let's say you're going shopping somewhere and you hate using um, the shopping bags, you can just use this tote and fit all kinds of stuff in there. So I've cut 24 inches long ways and I'm just going to flip this up at 24 inches this way. And then I'm gonna lay my ruler along the two edges that I've already squared. And I'm just going to cut in a little ways and then I'm gonna lay my ruler the other way and line it up now to those pieces and I should have a pretty decent square. It's not going to be perfect, but it's pretty decent. And then something fun you can do with your little scraps that you have left over is kind of like gift wrap it or save those for that. It's kind of a fun thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a second one of these out and then I'm going to cut my lining pieces for the main tote pieces. So what I've cut 24 by 24 and then what I've cut eight by six. using this really pretty emerald green it doesn't match really well but it's kind of a fun pop of color for the lining um, and it doesn't not match so again to save myself time what I'm doing is just gosh this is gonna be massive um, I'm keeping my fabric folded in half and then I'm just laying my main fabric on top, and then I'm gonna cut it to that size. So just laying them all together, I'm cutting my lining at the same time, both sides. Making sure I'm not cutting through anything I shouldn't be, of course. And then cutting off the selvage. A little extra bit. All right, so there is my exterior pieces and my lining all done. And I'm going to lay these all together. I'm gonna to clip them together because I wanna cut out my corners. And this is another time where you get to be as creative as you want and kind of think about your needs for the pattern. So we wanna square the corners. We wanna cut out how deep we want the tote. So of course you can make this just a flat tote bag, but if you want to add some depth to the bottom, 
um, you're going to want to cut out your corners. So let's say you want it to be six inches deep, which is probably what I'm going to go for. Um, you want to cut out like you have to take into account your seam allowance, which is going to be about half an inch. So you're going to want to cut it to three and a half because you sew your seam allowances so that, yeah. Okay, three and a half is what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna use a marker really quick to sketch out three and a half. So that's three. And there's my three and a half. And when I'm making these, I'm not worried about it being super, super precise. It'll look good. It's just kind of like a floppy tote anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just cut through all those layers. You do wanna make sure it's a square though or things won't quite line up. So here's my squares and I'm just gonna lay one of these on the other side and cut it out. So you could also trace it if you wanted or if you want two exact corners, you can do the same thing. But when it's all sewn together, it's not really gonna matter. And then I'm gonna use these little scraps um, for later. But you can also, if you're using zipper by the yard, which is what I'm gonna be doing, I'll be using these as zipper tabs. So you can just kind of cut it down to an inch and a half by two inches, uh, inch and a half by two and a half, just in case. So now I've got two zipper tabs for later. Um, and then if you wanted to add like a D ring so it can be clipped on in a bag, what you can do is save one of these squares again and fold it like a strap and top stitch it and then you'll add a D ring. So we'll go ahead and do that too. May as well while we're here. Um, but what I need to do now is cut out the lining for the zipper pocket, or not the zipper pocket, but the little zipper pouch that it gets stored in. Um, so let's set everything else aside. There's that. So again, I'm just going to fold my pieces on top of each other, line up some sides, and clip it all together. Grab my scissors and just cut along the sides. And then I'll cut the bottom open. So that took hardly any time and I've got everything I need ready to go. All right, so just a quick recap. I have two zipper tabs. I've got this piece here that's gonna attach my D-ring. I've got two straps for the bag. I have the zipper pocket, ugh, why do I keep saying that? Zipper pouch fabric, eight inches by six inches, two of the exterior, two of the lining, and then my tote bag pieces, two exterior and two lining. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, kind of ironing everything that I need to iron. So I'm gonna grab my straps, my little D-ring tab, and my zipper tabs. Okay, so for my little D-ring piece, folding it long ways. Pressing, folding those in. And we're just going to repeat this for the straps as well. So, just making sure that's pressed, and we'll set it aside. And then my two zipper tabs, you're going to fold those long ways. And then fold your raw edges inward. So honestly, you're just repeating those same folding steps a few times. So 
So we've got two zipper tabs, a D-ring tab. I'm gonna go ahead and press this. <clears throat> and I think that originally the first time I made these totes, I actually left them unlined so that it would be a little bit more lightweight. You could of course do that. You can add some interfacing to the handles if you wanted. Um, even just like if you had leftover 809 scraps, you could cut them to like three fourths inch wide and it would just add some stability to the handles. Don't worry about that. And I'm not folding it all the way into the center just because I want them to be a little bit wider. But I am going to press them together. Ooh, that's a good looking strap. So I'm going to repeat that over here. And of course, leaving it unlined is going to save you a lot of time. Um, and when I do that, I use my serger so that the uh, raw edges don't fray. But I know with the pillow video, a lot of you guys said that you don't have sergers, which, I mean, if you make mostly bags, why would you? And the iron that I'm using is called an Oliso iron and it lifts itself up off the ironing board, which kind of saves my wrist when I'm making a lot of things at once. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and start sewing this all together. Okay, I'm gonna start by sewing my straps just cause this is gonna be nice and quick. We're just gonna go down both sides long ways using a stitch length of like four and a half or five. straps ready to go. So I'm just going to set these aside with my tote for now and we'll finish the zipper pouch. All right. So if you wanted to, you could use an all purpose zipper that's already ready to go. I have a bunch of seven inch ones over here, but I would like to make mine a little fancier with my poison apple, poison apple zipper pull that I sell on my website. So I'm going to prep zipper by the yard. So I'm going to cut this to seven inches. I'm just going to make a little snip here at seven inches. Cut that off. Grab some scissors. Might help. And I'm using zipper by the yard from my handmade space. And if you're using the zipper pulls, you want to make sure that you're grabbing number five nylon. It's not going to work with anything else to my knowledge. All right. So I've got my zipper tabs and I've got my zipper. I like to press my zipper just to make sure that all the wrinkles are out, etc. So I'm going to take this zipper tab, fold it open. You can see our long raw edges are inside. And I'm going to lay my zipper teeth inside of there and you want to make sure you sandwich them pretty close to the edge so that your zipper teeth are all the way down inside and then I'm just gonna top stitch over the other side 
make sure you've caught the underside of your zipper also. And then again, we're gonna sandwich all the way. And your zipper tabs can vary in size. You could cut them down a little bit smaller so that they're not quite as wide as these are. These are like half an inch wide. Ooh, they're like three fourths of an inch wide almost. But there is my zipper all prepped. So we can take one of our exterior panels and one of our lining panels. And I'm gonna lay my zipper across the top here. And you wanna have some space along the outer edges. And that's gonna be your seam allowance basically. So it looks like I've got about a quarter of an inch um, because you do not wanna sew through your zipper tabs or it's gonna make it harder to turn. So I'm just gonna base my zipper in place along the top. And then I'm gonna lay, well, I'm gonna throw that on the floor because why wouldn't you? <laughs> so then I'm gonna lay my lining fabric wrong side down on top. And no, I can't tell the difference between these, what's wrong and what's right. And then you'll sew down a little bit further than where you basted your zipper on. And then we're gonna press it down both sides using my iron. And then we're gonna repeat with the other side. And you do not have to um, baste your zipper in place if you don't want to. I just think it helps, keeps things from shifting around. Make sure your zipper pull is out of the way. Okay. And then I can press this open. So now if you want to add that D-ring tab, you can. I'm just going to add it as like a little loop. I'm not going to actually add any hardware. So I just top stitched both sides and then I'll loop it around. Um, and you can actually make this even longer and just make it like a little wristlet strap or something like that. What I'm gonna do is just take one side, I'm gonna fold my lining to the back and just base this on. And then it's not gonna shift around on me. So I'm gonna unzip this about halfway. I'm gonna bring my exterior together and I'm going to poke my zipper towards the lining. So you want your zipper teeth to be like inside your lining fabric. And then I'm just gonna use whatever clips I have laying around. Again, your zipper into the lining. And you don't wanna sew through your zipper tabs. That's very, very important. So I'm gonna start with my lining side and about an inch or two from the side. And you can shrink your seam oil or your uh, stitch length. And with my finger here, I'm feeling for my zipper tab. So I'm kind of figuring out where it is compared to my seam allowance. And I just want to sew next to it, not through it. And I'm just kind of adding some back stitches over as I go. Because places that are going to have more wear and tear or pulling, you want to kind of reinforce. And I'll keep going. Just trim all of our excess 
So you don't want to trim down where you haven't sewn anything though. So in the lining where you haven't sewn, keep it untrimmed. And you are making this up as you go pretty much. So you can set whatever seam allowance you want to. Just make sure that you're not sewing through your zipper tabs. Okay, so I'm just trimming down my excess. Making a mess as I do it. Because why not? And then you can turn it through the hole in the opening. And honestly, if you didn't want to make a tote, you could just make little zipper pouches from this pattern. Any square will do. You can kind of square the bottom if you want, like we did when we cut out our tote bag fabric. But see, there's our zipper pull or zipper tab, and you can see I did not sew through it. And that's good. So it's really easy to poke out. You want to see that end of the zipper tab. Okay, make sure all your corners are poked through and you can use a crochet hook or a wooden chopstick or whatever you want. Um, I've got fairly decent nails, so I'm able to just kind of poke it. Okay, and then we'll turn this lining piece in and just top stitch over it. You can add a little woven label if you want. I've got little woven labels with my company name. But I'm just gonna sew it closed, cause whatever. And then you can tuck your lining inside. Make sure your corners match up nicely. Again, poke out those top edges. And then you've got a little zipper pouch that's ready for a pressing. There we go. That's ready to go. And you could even line this with waterproof canvas and then you could use it to put swimsuits in. You can change the measurements. Literally, once you know how to make a zipper pouch, you can make just about anything. So let's go ahead and move on to the tote bag. This is gonna be a lot bigger, take a lot longer, so I might speed through it, we'll see. All right, so the more I've thought about it, the more I've decided this tote bag is ginormous, but we're just gonna go with it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our exterior pieces and we're going to put those right sides together. This is just giant. I don't know what I was thinking. 18 inches is a great tote bag size. That's what I make most of mine at, like 18 by 18. Um, so you can clip this all together as you go, but I know that these are square, so I'm just going to lay them together. I'm going to start on the right side at the top and I'm going to use like a half inch seam allowance again you can use literally whatever seam allowance you want you're making this up as you go um, and just make sure that you're only sewing through where you need to so we're going to go all the way down one side kind of back stitch at the bottom and then instead of um cutting off the thread or anything, we're just gonna turn this bottom corner towards the tote. All right, so I'm gonna start at the bottom of this corner, back stitch, just cause I don't want that to come undone later. Fold the sides together. Continue on. When you're sewing the lining together, you're gonna wanna leave an opening in the bottom though. And again, what's great about a serger is it's going to cut off your seam allowance as you go, making it fairly thin seam allowance. And then back stitching at the top. And then we're going to square the bottom. Gosh, this is just giant. So you're going to, here's what it looks like when it's flat. And leaving those corners together is gonna help you 
lay this flat. So I'm just kind of taking my hand and smushing it like that. So those seams are together. And we're gonna sew across the bottom here. Definitely backstitch a lot in those corners. And I like to fold my seam flat. See how it's open here? And then backstitch over it. And honestly, since it's such a big bag and I want it to be pretty sturdy, I'm gonna make two stitch lines right next to each other. Just in case something happens to the first one, we've got the second one to back it up. So hopefully you can see that. And then you can just trim your little excess. I was wondering where all the excess fabric went. It went right on my knee. It's too funny. So I'll trim that down just a little bit. And then you're gonna stick your hand in the top and just fold the other side flat. And there was one year, I, I know that I used the 18 measurement and I made um, uh, one of these for like everybody in my boyfriend, now husband's family and like embroidered their names on it and stuff. They were really cool. And it's just something like fairly quick to make for someone you don't know. It's like who couldn't use a tote bag? I mean, five-year-olds probably don't need tote bags, but anyone over the age of 10 could probably use a tote bag. All right, so my exterior is mostly done, but I wanna go ahead and add my handles. Oh my God, this is just massive. It's unnecessarily massive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half, lining up my side seams. I'm going to measure five inches from the center and I'm going to make a snip. So here is the center and then I just snipped down five inches and then this is the side seams. So making that snip is going to be where I line up my handles. Okay. So I've got my five inch snips. So the handles then are gonna be 10 inches apart. You can make the handles a little bit longer if you need to. I think these will be good. And what you wanna do is lay your handles inside so there's the snip here's the center and I'm laying it yeah here's the snip center next to wait I guess I could show you the fabrics right here <laughs> yeah here's my little snip I'm laying it next to it on the right so that it's inside that snip and then you're gonna want to repeat that on the other side too and I'm just gonna base this in place for now and then make sure that your handle is in a nice clean U shape cut my thread and then again on the other side I'm laying the handle towards the center after the snip and then you're just going to repeat that with the other side keeping your handles inside the bag So I'm finding the snip, there it is. Laying my handle next to it. And then I'm dragging my hands across it, bringing it up in a U shape. And then laying the strap inside the snip. Go. Keep both of your straps inside your bag, but here's what we're looking at so far. Straps on one side, straps on the other. So I'm just going to throw this over here. Good grief, it's giant, unnecessarily so. I know I can't stop saying it. All right, and then we're just going to repeat all those steps for the other side. Speed 
through it. Make sure that you leave an opening in the bottom of your lining. side seam and if you want to double stitch through this side too you absolutely can but I think I've got enough reinforcement I'll turn down this excess Probably the biggest you'd want to go for a tote is like 20 inches. I'll probably say that later also. So I'm just dusting all my trash underneath the machine. I'll, I'll find it later. All right, so I'm going to turn my lining right side out. Here you can kind of double check all your seams that you caught all of the stuff. Everything looks good. You could add a pocket if you wanted to. I don't want to. <laughs> you could add a zipper to the top if you really want to. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take my bottom lining and I've got like my thumb and my middle finger in the corners and I'm pushing to line it up to this corner. So corresponding corner matchup. It's the name of the game. I'm going to repeat that with the other side. Make sure you keep your straps out of your way. And then I'm going to line up my side seams, laying them flat and clipping together. Good Lord, this is huge. This is like big enough to fit a picnic blanket and stuff. I don't even know. But I honestly think that I will use this when I shop. It's like the perfect Target trip bag. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to clip around and sew it together. Okay, so just kind of shaking the sides together nice and flat, adding clips at the straps here. Those will kind of be center points. And you can definitely add more clips if you need to. And I'm just going to sew around the top. I'm going to use a little bit bigger of a seam allowance, maybe like three-fourths of an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch. Honestly, it's whatever you want. But I'm going to use it a little bit bigger so that I have more of the strap inside the tote so I can top stitch around it twice for stability on those straps. to those straps I am back stitching. I'm 
Okay, so the top's all done. So now I can separate and pull the bag through the hole in the lining of my giant tote, the world's biggest tote bag. Ridiculous. And then you're gonna sew up this opening here. thread and stick my lining inside the bag I could sit in this I could literally sit in this all right lining up my corresponding corners pulling any spare threads and I'm just going to kind of roll the lining inside the bag and since none of this is vinyl or I'm worried about it melting or anything I can actually use my iron to press the top of the bag and then we'll top stitch around it twice um, if you have a cover stitch machine you could also use a cover stitch so let's do it And then you can kind of double check that your straps are nice and flat. They're the size that they should be. Oh my goodness. Well, honestly, like if you go clothing shopping though, for everyone in your family, you can fit it in this tote bag. <laughs> All right, let's stop stitch it. I really don't need any clips at this point. I'm gonna start at the side seam. Make sure my threads are pointed towards the back. Back stitch where you're starting. Make sure you're only sewing through the fabric that you want to be sewing through. started so all I'm gonna do is lift my needle up and backstitch and bring it down and this is just gonna help reinforce those handles little threads and our tote bag's done so let's see if it actually fits in the zipper pouch just so you can get a size reference I mean it's basically like an apron for your body but a giant bag <laughs> why did I make it so large anyway this is the perfect grocery tote. 
or shopping tote. So I'm gonna fold it up. And I feel like it's not not going to fit, but. Oh yeah, it fits. It totally fits. Will it zip? I don't know, probably not. Am I gonna have to remake this video? Cause I'm not gonna. Okay, well, I know that 18 by 18 definitely fits. I don't know what I was thinking when I did one this large. It's not gonna zip. <laughs> So like I said, please make sure that you cut your tote bag fabric to smaller than 24 inches by 24 inches. Um, 18 by 18 is definitely ideal. And I can't wait to see what you guys make. Let me know you enjoyed this video or let me know that you definitely did enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Am I technically carrying myself in a tote? <laughs>